Hector encountered more and more struggling Mexican-American veterans at a time when unprecedented benefits for veterans were reshaping the country. Just who gets the benefits of this bill? Any veteran, male or female, with more than three months active service, who hasn't been dishonorably discharged. The Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, the GI Bill, included low-cost mortgages that moved millions from urban apartments to suburban homes, and educational loans which put over two million veterans into colleges and universities, and another six million into training programs. But the Mexican-American veterans Garcia was seeing in his practice had trouble getting these and other benefits they'd earned through their service. After a certain amount of these stories, he starts to put two and two together, and he realizes this is not incidental to each and every one of these individuals. This is systematic. This is a problem that is a largely institutionalized problem that seems to target Mexican-American veterans, and this infuriated him. When Hector got charged about something, it was, you know, game on. Garcia began holding meetings for veterans to voice their concerns. By March of 1948, they had become the foundation of a new Mexican-American organization, the American GI Forum. The idea was this is a veterans organization, but in Hector's mind, he saw all Mexican-Americans as either being veterans or veterans by proxy because the wife that was supportive of the man the parents who had raised a young man willing to die for his country were as much a part of, the, of this veterans and military culture. And so everybody in the Mexican-American community becomes a veteran. This incipient growth of uh, veterans activism begins to, to flourish. And in the early part of 1948, it simply blows up. The catalyst was the controversy surrounding the burial of Private Felix Zilongoria Jr., killed in action in the Philippines. In 1948, after his remains finally made it back to the States, his widow Beatrice tried to make funeral arrangements in his hometown of Three Rivers, Texas. The funeral director refused because Longoria was a Mexican, later telling a reporter the whites wouldn't like it. Word of the refusal reached Hector Garcia, and he sprang into action, calling newspapers and sending telegrams to elected officials from the state and federal government, even President Truman. The story is published. This becomes a huge, a huge controversy. Garcia called together members of the GI Forum to plan a protest. Over a 1,000 people filled an elementary school auditorium in Corpus Christi. In the course of the meeting, Hector receives a telegram from Lyndon Johnson, who was the newly elected senator from Texas. And Johnson, actually, as a veteran himself, was outraged at uh, the circumstances and very, very sympathetic to Hector's concerns. A Texas war hero refused burial in his hometown because of his Mexican origin is laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery with America's most honored dead. The Longoria affair changed Hector Garcia's life. It led to a close but at times contentious friendship with Lyndon Johnson, giving the doctor unusual access to a Washington power broker and future president. It also permanently changed the focus of the American GI Forum from veterans' rights to civil rights with Hector Garcia leading the way. When he's pulled into the whole arena of Mexican-American reform, Hector finds his call. He realizes that he's been prepared from quite young. He begins to remember that when they used to travel, they would stay in the car. They couldn't find hotels. Father would not talk about it and say, this is racism. But they all knew that something was wrong. The Longoria Fair brings to Hector all of these experiences. Hector Garcia would quickly become the most prominent Mexican-American civil rights leader of his era. Under his direction, 
the American GI Forum would grow across Texas and the Southwest, challenging segregation in its many forms, from disparities in health services to segregation in schools, to the poll taxes that kept Mexican Americans and other minorities from voting. Until those taxes were outlawed in the mid-1960s, the GI Forum held beauty pageants, where the winner was the girl who raised the most money to pay the taxes so others could vote. In Hector's mind, whatever progress that the Mexican-American community would engage in would be by becoming more American, by understanding the system, by voting, by going to the military, by getting a good education. Hector wanted to make this bridge, bring an American society into the barrio and bring the barrio into American society. Garcia wanted Mexican-Americans to follow the same path as other ethnic groups who had overcome prejudice to become part of the fabric of the United States, such as the Irish and the Italians. But he also perceived a direct threat to his plans. A growing number of Mexicans illegally crossing the border in search of work. At the constant risk of deportation, undocumented workers were easily exploited, forced to work long hours and to live in deplorable conditions. As a doctor, Hector Garcia had seen those conditions firsthand in South Texas and believed them inhumane and un-American. He also thought the seemingly endless supply of cheap labor hurt Mexican-Americans by driving down wages, forcing whole families to seasonally migrate north in search of better pay. His solution was to take a strong stance against the hiring of undocumented workers, drawing a clear distinction between Mexican and Mexican-American labor. He saw illegal immigration as a real threat to the Mexican-American community's ability to stay at home, get educated, get stable jobs, participate in the electoral process, and become American. But in pushing for a restriction of the border. Hector and the American GA Forum, they were at times repeating the stereotypes that Americans had of Mexicans. And in fact, in the one sponsored pamphlet, What Price Wetbacks, which was written by one of his most loyal friends, it is full of stereotypes and comments that would make anybody cringe. In 1954, the forum threw its support behind a quasi-military search and seizure of illegal workers conducted by the U.S. Border Patrol, Operation Wetback. With its late-night raids, its deportation of people pulled off the streets, and the breakup of families based on citizenship, Operation Wetback brought immediate protests from the Mexican-American community, enough to change Hector Garcia's mind. And it is at that moment where you see Hector shift his views. That is such a painful ordeal for that Mexican and Mexican-American community that now you don't see Mexican-American or Latino leaders promoting any kind of deportation campaign. As it turned out, Operation Wetback had little lasting effect. Depressed wages in agricultural work in Texas and California and a growing U.S. economy led many Mexican-Americans to move out of the Southwest. And where Mexican-Americans went, the American GI Forum soon followed. With Puerto Rican veterans in the Northeast also joining up, by the end of the 1950s, there were more than 30 chapters across the country. For Hector Garcia, this network provided the leverage he needed to change the lives of Latinos everywhere through the power of the ballot box. This is the end game that Hector Garcia really was after. Until Latinos, Mexican Americans in particular, become a national political force that can make or break a presidential election, we will always be a marginalized community. Garcia's timing was perfect. 
1960 U.S. presidential race was going to be close. And candidate John Kennedy had chosen an old friend of Hector's to be his running mate, Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson is going to deliver the state of Texas and other states throughout the Southwest because of his understanding and knowledge of the Mexican-American leadership in communities. And Hector Garcia is his man to get that job done. Rather than politicize the forum, Garcia created a new association, the Viva Kennedy Clubs. They held rallies, fundraisers, and voter registration drives, all to roll out the Mexican-American vote on election day. Voten ustedes por el Partido Democrata el día 8 de noviembre. Que viva Kennedy! And as it turned out, every vote counted. Kennedy won by less than 1% of the popular vote, with many states captured by very small margins. It was not lost on Hector that the Kennedy administration owed something very directly to the Mexican-American people for that victory. Hector Garcia would be disappointed. President Kennedy never came through with the initiatives and appointments Garcia felt Mexican-Americans had earned. But Kennedy's successor, Lyndon Johnson, did. He appointed more Mexican-Americans to positions in government than any president before. And he passed landmark legislation, making illegal the forms of discrimination Hector Garcia had battled for years from segregation in restaurants and schools to poll taxes. While many saw the new laws only in the context of the black civil rights movement, when Johnson addressed Congress, he invoked his own experience as a teacher in a small Mexican-American school in Texas. My students were poor, and they knew even in their youth the pain of prejudice. They never seemed to know why people disliked them, but they knew it was so, because I saw it in their eyes. I never thought that I might have the chance to help the sons and daughters of those students and to help people like them all over this country. But now I do have that chance. And I'll let you in on a secret. I mean to use it. Twenty years after the end of World War II, the citizenship Latinos had fought and died for had finally arrived. But the struggle for true equality was just beginning. 